Good afternoon, folks. Sometimes there's a need for review. And here, especially for new viewers who have been fooled by bad reporting on a magnetosphere event recently, and you shouldn't feel bad. I'm going to show you how complex this world is right now. And so let's run through this here. It's the retired 2011 magnetic model based on equations nobody uses anymore, outdated code and equations with the solar wind, and which was retired because of its inability to handle even normal solar wind fluctuations and normal data issues. Last night, one of those data issues occurred in the solar wind, and the equations spat out garbage, which fooled a number of people. Before diving into exactly what happened last night, let's get a picture on how often I have to do this exact debunking. The last time was just last year on a false story about backside pressure waves. Good evening, folks. It is time for the biannual explanation of the worst space weather tool in history. The magnetosphere model you can find on NASA's ISWA shows crazy things. Super shock waves, backside pressure, reversals of the field, all of which would likely mean the end of civilization. Certainly no more spacecraft left to monitor anything, let alone the internet to view it. The newer models don't really have these problems, and that is for one reason only, extra coding. These extra codes handle cosmic ray hits, data dropouts, and other garbage data inputs, but what do I mean by that? As with all things on ISWA, you can hover your cursor over to learn more. In this case, you learn that indeed, nothing monitors the Earth's entire field. That is impossible, much to my disappointment, but instead, this is only based on ACE solar wind data. The problem is that they develop the model under an idealized data stream state, meaning that if there are no data dropouts, cosmic ray hits, or other glitches, it works all right. Unfortunately, since the satellite must uplink to ground stations on an ever-turning Earth, we do get data dropouts. Cosmic rays have been messing with the data for years, and that's pretty much a given in space, not to mention that the satellite is now 22 years old and has not been without a glitch or two in its day. Every single magnetic model ever put on the net, including Nick from Japan, showed these errors. They just decided to take it down when the program ended. Here in the States, grant funding dictates they must be kept online, which is why you can find the primary core signet in the retired section of the program. They do still let you access it. That would be the grant funding. Since we know how that model gets made from solar wind, let's first discuss backside pressure. Some videos you see online attempt to suggest that something is pushing from behind, like a second solar wind, and that it blows back our magnetic field every so often. Well, the ACE satellite does not have a detector pointing away from the sun. Its detector points forward. Nibiru, Thor, and Jesus could all be firing protons at the satellite from 10 meters behind, and it would have no freaking clue it was happening. So why does the model show the backside pressure? Well, unfortunately, one of the failures of the retired model is that it reads certain data glitches at negative 999 for density and plasma speed. This is, of course, not a real reading, but a default during the error. It tells the model that the solar wind is blasting hard from behind. Of course, even if that were possible, the A satellite has no way to detect it. The negative numbers are what fool the model, and again, I do wish something could monitor the entire field, but we don't have that yet. Even these new models use that solar wind data and are not actual field monitoring products. And again, if such a thing as a backside major pressure wave actually happened, we would likely be dead, definitely not on the internet. Next, I'd like to mention the cosmic ray hits because those do end up looking like something real, super fast and dense CMEs. Even though it is just one cosmic ray hitting, if it's a carbon nuclei, it's got six protons. Oxygen has eight. Well, what if it's an iron nuclei or a uranium nuclei? This is more difficult because you need to go check and see if it was a real solar wind event or a straight short spike indicating cosmic ray hit or similar error. Well, the best way to do that is not to go searching for whatever video online is saying the scariest thing. Check the data yourself. That's one of the reasons we made spaceweathernews.com so you can be empowered especially during this time when the magnetic field is reversing and the topic is ripe for misinformation. By the way, top right, click to learn more about all of the things we're about to show you. Just quickly, first I'd imagine you would see a major solar flare or CME on the SDO rotating videos or the x-ray charts below them, but there is the actual solar wind data used to make the magnetic models right there. The black one is all that has ever been used to make any of those magnetic models not a thing more. 
You can look to the magnetometer to see if it picked it up. You can look to the KP index to see if there's any effect on the global field. If it was a real impact, the protons would probably be rising and the electron flux would show it too. Again, top right, you can learn way more about all of this stuff. You can basically become an expert in about an hour. And try to remember, when I do these debunking videos, cosmology, climate change, solar forcing of electroquakes, almost everything I do is anti-mainstream. And something like this, a magnetic reversal, a backside pressure wave, would be really huge for my channel. Why not take advantage? I've only been saying the field is collapsing for eight years. Well, because I know the facts. I owe you more than that. And little bits of key information like you got here, if missed, snowball into massive impacts on the credibility of the entire community. I'll see you in the morning. Be safe, everyone. So, what happened last night? It was not the same sort of backside pressure wave, more like a massive spike in density of the normal solar wind, which collapsed the sun-facing side of the field. The mishmash in back actually looks scarier than it really is, but it occurred just as a data correction was applied to the ACE solar wind stream that actually ruined a video I have been planning for seven days. I've got Discover Solar Wind data on the left, ACE on the right. There appears to have been a breakage on the particle detector whereby it was catching the correct magnetism, particle speed, and temperature, but it was only catching about 1 out of 10 to 100 of the particles that Discover was catching. Like 90 to 99 percent of the detector face just stopped working on ACE. Now density is orange on both charts, and ACE on the right indeed had suddenly gone from near matching of Discover data to being again only about 1 percent. Now, ACE is super old. It's doubled its life expectancy as a satellite, has a great replacement in Discover, and I was getting ready to say goodbye in a video detailing its demise. And then, either it miraculously fixed itself, or, more likely, they applied a broad correction to the data stream, which happened last night, and it immediately fixed the data both retroactively and going forward. As you can see, the orange lines now match much better. Well, when that happened, this model thought that there was a 100x jump in solar wind density, which would be tremendously bad, but of course, did not actually happen. It was garbage in, garbage out. And of course, the electron flux is silent. The magnetosphere was calm as could be, actually calming from the coronal hole stream a few days earlier. And remember, nothing monitors the field. Nothing. It's not possible. These are models based on solar wind data alone. And when that data is garbage, so is the output. I realize that's kind of complex, but that is truly the level of diligence and detail required for this specific field. Some topics online are fine for the, oh, look at that, what is that? Make up your own mind. But when it's this complex of a topic, we do need to realize that speculation can cause more harm than good, and not just to you, but to the credibility of the community when we try to call out real events, real cover-ups, real lies. The magnetic field is still fading fast. The concerns remain. But our vulnerability to false reporting grows as the complexity deepens. It's key to know the difference between a keen eye spotting something they don't recognize and the genuine hard work that goes into being genuinely responsible for the knowledge and information you disseminate. It's not something done in a few minutes. I'll see you in the morning. Be safe, everyone.